Howdy! Oh god, I can't start a video with howdy. <laughs> Hello YouTube! In this video we're going to be creating a plot that shows the returns of not one, not two, but three, even maybe more stocks. So, let's get started. So, I've already taken the liberty of doing some imports because that's usually the most boring bit of a video. Uh, Standard imports, NumPy's PD, Pandas PD, Pandas Data Reader to get the data, and Matplotlib to do the plotting and stuff. So the very first thing we need to do is let's pick the stocks that we want to display. For this, I, I propose we have a uh, array that just has some stock objects in it. So we'll do something like this. We'll say ticker, and we'll have to get a ticker like that and we'll have to get uh, the name of the stock as well. So we'll do something like this. And let's just have three of them for now. So we'll do one, two, three, like that. Take the comma off the last one. Um, so how are we gonna get the tickers and the names? Well, we're gonna be using uh, Yahoo Finance along with this Pandas data reader as our data source. So we need to go to Yahoo Finance. Oh, look at that, I've already got it up. Um, if we look over here, we can get a company called United Utilities. They're from England. Note the price is like 900, that's pence. Um, the reason I'm telling you to note the price is because in a second we're going to look at another stock that has a completely different price and we need to compare these two stocks. So you'll see what we're going to do. Uh, so we've got the name obviously here and we have the ticker symbol, which is the one in brackets. So we need to take that whole ticker symbol, excluding the brackets for United Utilities. Uh, let's pick another one. We'll say Vodafone Group. That's not the right one. We want to pick a different one. The reason is that that one wasn't uh, in a British market. I want to make sure that we're all using the ones that are on British markets. In this case here, uh, Vodafone is 149. So there's a massive price difference. Um, in terms of the stock price. Now that doesn't mean difference in the size of the company or anything like that because we need to know the shares outstanding for that. But it just means that when we graph them, if you look at this graph right here, we're going to see that United Utilities would actually be way up here um, compared to uh, Vodafone. So we need to do something to convert these uh, prices uh, into something else, most likely returns, so that we can compare them on a, on a sort of equal basis. Uh, and let's also pick another stock. Uh, let's pick, I don't know, uh, BP Group. That came up there. Uh, yep, that one looks like it'll work. Again, that's not the one on the UK index. So we'll just do BP.L. And there we go. So we get that one. That's that's 400. So you'd have, if we were to plot these just on price, you'd have one all the way up here. You'd have one in the middle, and then you'd have one at the bottom. We wouldn't be able to compare them very well. So let's put those into our little data thing now. We'll say uu.l, and we know that is United Utilities. Do, do, do. And we'll also say vod, not bod, <laughs> vod.l. That's Vodafone Group. And we'll also say bp.l. Feel free to choose your own stocks. Perfectly fine. You don't have to follow along word for word with this tutorial. So, we'll do that. We've got our stocks. Let's create a little method and we'll call it uh, create plots. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a stock there, the stocks to that method. So, we'll create the method here. We'll say create plots. Let's pass the stocks like that. First thing we need to do, we need to say data is equal to a new data frame. So pd.dataFrame, like that. Then we need to say for stock in stocks, what do we want to do? Well, we want to say, let's take the data frame and we'll have an index for the stock ticker. So we're saying, okay, of the current stock we're on, get the ticker so the first time we go through it's going to be uu .l. then the second time it's going to be vod.l so on and so forth just so we can sort of access uh, the data individually so I say wb data reader so that's our data reader we're going to be using here then we're going to pass in stock ticker uh, because we're going to be getting the stock 
um, using that ticker. Then we're going to pass in Yahoo as a second argument. That argument refers to the data source, and actually we probably should do this as well. Just say data underscore. Whoa, there's the underscore source like that and then we also want to specify a start date now when i typically do these sort of things i do the first of january 20 uh i was gonna say 2017 then but that's 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 2007 um just before the financial crisis so we get in um the financial crisis in our data if we wanted to and then we're also going to only pick the column adjusted close so what we now have in here actually in the data um, data frame is we have a series of um, we could print it actually let's print it we have a series of dates next to the adjusted close for the per, uh, for the stock and we have the three stocks in there so if we print that data go to the terminal say Python oh god he can't type today okay uh, print that what's it gonna come out with it takes a bit of time so it's got to get data what we can see here is we have these three columns. So we have a date. So that's the first thing. We have those three columns as well with the prices. Um, and I know that, for example, this one's United Utilities, this one's Vodafone Group, and this one is uh, BP. Which is great because now it's all in one easily accessible format. Uh, so what do we need to do next? Well, what we need to do next is we need to turn this data into something that is equal across all of the groups. So the way we do that is we're going to calculate the stock return. What's the stock return, I hear you ask? Well, the stock return, um, we're going to do it on a per day basis, by the way. So each one of these values is going to be turned into a percentage value for each day. So what's the stock um, return? Well, all it is is the uh, current price divided by the previous price. And if you wanted to make it sort of human readable, so it would be something like 100%, you would just times it by 100. So we're going to do that now, and we're going to do it for all of the stocks we actually have. And we're going to do it in a wonderful way. This is why Python is such an amazing language. So we're going to declare a new little data frame called returns. We're going to take our data frame, and we're going to say data.apply. Then we're going to pass in a lambda. Ooh, this is getting fun. Like that. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say x divided by x1, like that. And then all we want to do is times it by 100 to get our returns. Surprisingly, in terms of the data, we are done. That is four lines to get the data and do stuff to the data. Brilliant. So all we need to do now is plot the data. So let's first state what size the plot we want uh, it to be. Wow, that was some poor English. We're gonna say figure size is equal to brackets 10 by six. That'll be fine. Other sizes do, do occur, but I'm gonna pick 10 by six. The next thing we need to do is we need to plot that data. So we're going to say for stock in stocks. And we'll say PLT plot. And what do we want to plot? We want to plot returns dot, uh, well, returns ticker like that. And then we want to do, we want to have a label as well. The label is going to be equal to the stock name. Uh, I've actually done something wrong here because what I want to do here is um, what have I done wrong? I haven't put the stock. I can see that it didn't look right. So returns like stock. Da, 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 da. Uh, that looks better. Yeah, that looks better. We'll soon see when I run it and it goes wrong as it always does. The next thing we need to do is we need to say plc.legend. That's not me. That's just a method we're calling. PLT legend, that's just going to show the legend on the uh, graph, so it's going to give us these labels in a handy dandy little box in the corner. Uh, next, let's set the labels. So the Y label, that's the label that uh, is vertical. 
is going to be the cumulative returns with a little percentage sign. There we go. And then we're going to have the X label. X goes across the bottom. You can always remember that because X is across like that. Oh, we should have a capital T there. It doesn't look right otherwise. Next thing we need to do, just say plt.show. And we should be all good. Uh, do we need to take out the print type? We've taken out the print. So uh, let's run this now. We'll say python main.py. Press enter. Wait it for it to do its magic. And look at that! Oh my god! It's worked in one go. Um, look what we can see here. We can see um, we have our little legend up in the top corner, as I said it would be there. So we can see, okay, so the blue line represents United Utilities. They're currently on top with their returns as of today. Uh, you can see Vodafone Group, that's the big orange one that goes all the way up here, then comes all the way down here. Um, and you can see B BP Group at the bottom. Brilliant. Um, and we can also, we've got the dates at the bottom and we've got the cumulative returns, so what they actually mean across this time. Well, hopefully that tutorial has been uh, helpful and insightful and uh, you've found many life lessons present here. Uh, if you have, great, leave a like and uh, if you have some things you want to get off your chest, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, also leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer all of them as I usually do. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, bye 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 bye